I'm going to be answering a question I had just very recently around Adalo and Xano. So the question in general was from an Adalo external collection, what's the process? So I've got one created here called timestamp underscore stuff. Um, I'm just reusing this from an example I did before just to keep it simple and quick. So the question is, when I come to a list screen, how using the timestamp underscore stuff, how do I use the add filter so that it will work at, for filtering items in Xano? So really the trick here is knowing how to format this query parameter so that when a Dalo makes the call, it formats it correctly for Xano. I'm gonna real quick show you what's involved with doing this in Xano and then how to configure it in a Dalo. So I'm using an existing API. Once again, this is just my test app, so uh, don't hold me accountable for anything that it really does. And I just wanna be able to do a get where it queries all records. I'm using user but whatever tables and APIs you have in Xano um, where you query all records, this, uh, this approach will work. So the first thing we need to do is create an input, a query parameter. I'm going to make it a text input and I'm gonna call it filter. Obviously you can call it anything. And so the idea here is that I'm gonna to wanna to use filter in what is a query all records of users and I am going to set up a where condition, if you're familiar with SQL. It's really just a conditional that will reduce down the number of records that are returned. And so I'm going to say for my database, which is user, I'm going to be filtering based on name. And I don't want to do an equals, you could, but that means the person on the mobile app side would have to type in exactly what the match is. So this would be an exact match. What I typically use is includes. Includes is very helpful because when I select my input variable of filter, no matter, and I'll show you this in the test, no matter where this text shows up in name, it will be considered a match. Okay, so that's what this looks like. And I'm gonna run a debug and test I am going to, let's see here, save this. And then once again, you can ignore this for each loop. This was for a, a different test I was doing to solve a problem for somebody. What we're focused on is the filter I put in. So you'll see that it shows up here. Let me show you the data. Let's flip over to my user table. I have two records, Jim and Carly. And so let's say we want to filter on the name Jim. That's what I'm gonna to try to find. And what you'll like about the includes is it's case insensitive, or at least what I like about it is it's case insensitive, which means even though I've got a lowercase j, it will match on my uppercase j for Jim. So I went ahead and entered Jim. This is what I'm expecting to have come from Adalo. And we're gonna test and make sure my changes in Xano work. And they do, I only have one item coming back. And just to show you what it looks like if I have no filter item, I get both Jim and Carly. And if you notice Jim space Callahan, just to show you what the includes, if I do that, which is the end of Jim and the beginning of Callahan, not that anybody would enter that, but I still find it. So it's, it's not a fuzzy search, but it is a very capable search. So the person looking for things doesn't have to be exact. Okay, once again, Jim, and we get our match. Okay, so we know our API is working to query all records and filter by the input variable called filter. So now let's go over to Adalo. Um, I think the examples you'll find and what I was looking at in uh, the Adalo documentation show you how to do it for Airtable. And for Airtable, they have you like uh, filter by formula. 
I think this has special meaning in Adalo and or Airtable. I'm not familiar enough with Airtable. But then they had kind of a cryptic, um, something like this as an example, uh, like that. So for Airtable, this makes sense. But this has absolutely no meaning um, of value as it works in um, Xano. It's actually a lot easier than what you might think. I'm going to delete this. So what this name represents is the actual query parameter on the API. And for us, it's filter. And then for the value, no apostrophes, no quotes, just the text, Jim. So what this will do is, actually, let me see if I can show you real quick. I will, so that there's no magic in this, I'm gonna grab the endpoint URL for Xano. I'm gonna open up a new tab. And if you notice here, um, when I'm using the Xano URL, it is showing both records, Jim and Carly. But a query parameter, standard HTTP web-based query parameter looks something like this. And if you notice, when I do filter equal Jim at the end of user, I only get back Jim. And if I were to change that to Carly, I only get back Carly. And so after the, let me, not that anybody really wants to know this, you just want to know the answer and I'm making you wait. So I guess that makes me mean, but after the URL, right, this is all the base URL from HTTPS all the way through slash user. And then the first query parameter at the end of that is separated from it with a question mark. And then whatever comes after that question mark is considered the first query parameter. And ours is called filter, which matches this, filter. And then the equal Carly matches this. And so that is what Xano is parsing to allow you to pass data from somewhere else and get a limited set back. And so what we're trying to mimic in Adalo is we want Adalo to pass uh, or to attach this onto the end of our URL. Okay, so to do that, I literally just say filter, which is this, and Adalo is going to know to put the question mark there for you. And then I tell it what I want for data, in our case, Jim, because we want to find Jim. And as you can see, you know, Carly, Jim, whatever you want to call it, but we'll just do this again. There we go. So now, if I've done all this correctly, I should be able to do a preview and only get back Jim. There we go. You saw it have both before because I'd done some testing where I let both come back. Um, I don't think that's a delay in Adalo, but the long and short of it is if I do a preview and sign up, first screen I come to is Jim, and that executes this equivalent API call, and that gives me back just Jim. And just to prove that point for both of us, make it Carly, and I come back in. I just see Carly. So this would be how you do filtering. If you picked data on a prior screen and then said filter, you can pass that data into this query parameter. And I would assume you would use your magic text. And for your form inputs, you would pick that data element. And you would have your magic text um, red pill here. And so then, instead of hard coding it like I did, you could enter the data in a prior screen and have it passed into this screen where the API gets called for this list. And you would have this filter with your magic text. And you would allow somebody at that point to pick categories or names or from any list that you might have on a prior screen and get a filtered outcome. 
you have any questions, let me know.